The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was a kid, I used to love it when guests would come unannounced to our house, usually in the evening. The reason I loved it so much was because shortly after the guests arrived and my father settled in to take care of them in the parlor, my mother would scoot out into the kitchen and there she would make muffins from scratch, by the way, and present them, it seemed to me, only minutes later. Warm, served with butter, and to accompany your tea, the wonderful Irish tea. And of course, we kids were invited, so we got to taste Ma's beautiful muffins, and we've never been able to discover that recipe even though we searched the house after mom died. What was it that drove that little bit of energy in my mother and in my dad, and maybe a little bit of it too in us? It's called hospitality. and. While it seems to be getting further and further from our way of life, it's still an important part of what we do from day to day. And while there are many definitions of hospitality, I kind of like this one. The friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, or strangers. It's very interesting that today's readings are basically, at least the first reading and the third reading, are basically about hospitality. Abraham did it. Martha did it. Mary did it. They all were involved in hospitality. Abraham meets three strangers outside his tent and immediately begins to bustle about. If you read the scriptures, that's exactly what it says. He's bustling here and bustling there, and giving orders to Sarah and telling her to make bread, getting, the fat, getting a calf in so that they can have a little meat. It's the perfect situation of what is known as Bedouin hospitality, very important in the desert. You had to be able to help people as they made their journey. And as the story goes, and it's a wonderful story told in the book of Genesis, at the end of that meeting, when it's time for the strangers, the three, 
to move along, one of them says to them, or it says to Abraham, he says, well, I can't find it, suddenly I didn't have it written out. The basic thrust of what he says is, a year from now, I'm coming back. And when I do, Sarah will have a son. Now, the part of the story you don't hear is the part that was following there in which they describe Sarah being in the back of the tent laughing. Sarah's laughing. Why? Yeah, right. I'm just about to have a kid. I'm, I'm older than the hills, and so is he. But what happens? God has intervened, and a year later, she does indeed have a child, and that child is indeed a son. So the Lord intervenes in Sarah and Abram's life in a way that helps them. And the message from God comes to them from strangers to whom they give hospitality. The story of Martha in the gospel is the story of somebody had to invite Jesus to come to Martha and Mary's home. One has to assume maybe it was Martha. Jesus comes. He is welcomed. Mary decides she's going to sit down near him at his feet and listen to what he has to say. What a wonderful thing to be able to sit down in the midst of this wonderful visitor arriving, being able to sit there and listen to the great things that Jesus says. In the meantime, Martha is out back, puttering around, getting dinner ready. It wasn't called dinner then, but we know. So she's flying around, trying to get everything ready, ready to go, and she notices, you know what? Oh, Mary's sitting over there having a good time. I'm killing myself. Right? And so she says to Jesus, hey, wait a minute, man. Let's get her involved too. And Jesus says to her, see if we have this one up, aha, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. Mm. Jesus is saying, hey, Martha, get with it, girl. Mar Mary has chosen to listen to the word of God. And you're so distracted, you can't see what's going on around you. You're just too busy with everything. Your job has overtaken you as a person. So what are we to have among our Christian people? People who are always at Jesus' feet, always listening to the word, always hearing what Jesus has to say in prayer? Is that what the ideal Christian is? Who's going to get the meal ready? Right? So the reality is what Jesus is saying is Mary is saying to Martha, don't get distracted in your work. Don't let your work become everything in your life. Remember, there needs to be a balance. So the good Christian is the one who is both Martha and Mary, listening to the word of God, as Mary did, but also able to do for others, to welcome them to bring strangers into our midst so that we can indeed see that justice is done for everyone. Now I'm hearing and reading and seeing a great deal of people saying we don't want strangers in our midst. We can build walls against immigrants. 
we can make sure that those Muslims stay far away. And when I hear those things, I think back just 90 or so years ago when my Irish-born parents came to the United States and were despised. Why? Because they were Irish. And because, being Irish, they were Catholics. And being Catholics, of course, and coming in huge numbers, they would soon be taking orders in our public life from a foreign leader, also known as the Pope. Now, none of that happened. And I will proudly say that the Irish and Irish Americans have contributed mightily to the growth of our country. So why are we still afraid of the foreigner? Why are we still afraid of the stranger? Why do we think that Muslims living in our midst will be taking orders from a foreign caliphate? The word of God and the instruction of Jesus in that word are telling us to welcome people into our midst. Certainly, Abraham welcomed strangers. Jesus speaks to Martha and Mary and tells them to be aware of the needs of others, to not let our jobs get in the way of who we are. And today, in the responsorial psalm, we heard the one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. If we intend to live in the presence of the Lord, then we must do justice. And justice today means that we continue to welcome strangers into our midst, regardless of their faith, that we continue to bring immigrants into our country because all of us, at one time or another, with the exception of our African-American brothers and sisters and the Native Americans, all of us descend from or are, at the present moment, immigrants in this country. So it is important for us today to hear the Word of God and to recognize that if we intend to be a just people, we will live in the presence of the Lord by welcoming those who indeed are strangers to our shores. It is not just a great American principle. It is the Word of God that urges us on to justice.